Christmas is back and it's better than ever. That's right. That's right, baby. What is going on? All you movie loving badasses. What's going up? Movie Dojo Army is in the house, baby. That's right. And back, That's right. back, back on the channel. That's right. We got actor, filmmaker, martial artist, stunt man. He's done it all. That's right. Robert Samuels, welcome back to the channel, brother. Hey guys, thank you. I appreciate you having me, man. Glad to be oh. back. Oh, yeah. yeah. And That's Rick right. Yeah, that's, right. that's right. That's <laughs> right. Y'all know him. That's right. Author, Hall of Famer, the one and only, the great ass. The best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. <laughs> consultant, come on, bring it on. <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend, the icon, the main event, Rick Myers. Welcome back, my friend. It's a pleasure to be here, especially with this team. Who needs all those other people? <laughs> <laughs> we got Bobby. We got Fat. That's we right. Got the bearded guy. <laughs> the bearded guy, yes. Yeah, boy. Oh, that's right. So uh, it's it's great having Robert here. I'm gonna call him Bobby because uh, I'm his friend. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's right. how you know. If you can call him Bobby, that means he likes you. That's <laughs> right. You have to be Bobby in quotes. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? We got the roll call here. Hold on one second to see what we got in the house here. We got Yusuke here saying nothing like 90s Hong Kong action film. Nothing, That's right. Nothing like that. That's 90s right. Hong Kong action. We are here to represent. That's right. Uh, Jay Call, what's going on? Anubis. That's right. Will in the house here. What's up to Will? That's right. I'm trying to blow up his comment here. He says, nothing better than a versus episode. And bonus, it's a Hong Kong action films going head to head. That's literally right. head to head. Yes. That's Most right. That's moments right. in these films where they. Oh, we saw that in the opening. Both <laughs> Joyce Cadenzi and Bobby and Samuel. Both That's going right. in the <laughs> That's right. That's right. Sexy Sumo in the house. What's going on? Hey. Robert Jefferson. Todd Johnson. Nate Dogs. What is going on? What's up, Glad to have you. Nate Dog. All of you here. It is an honor and a privilege to have these legends here on the channel, as usual. But Versus is back, baby. It's been a while. You know what I'm saying? That's right. It's been a while. I think it's. December of last year, Rick. I think that was the last episode last we month. did. So it's been a while. Uh, but hey, happy 45. Happy 45. That's right. Uh, that's fact, right. Rick Chang wants to be this on so be on this so bad, but I think he's in England now. Frank? Yeah, he's going to the opera or something in England. He's watching them, them he's going to them Roger Waters concerts. And oh, I'm jealous. Yeah. Canada. He was in Canada. Yeah. I'm jealous, Frank. Master remaster Frank Jang. I'm, I'm jealous of you. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll get him on next week. He's already in for next week. And next week we got a doozy. And I'll I'll let you guys know at the end of the stream before we end it for today, uh, what Thanks. next week's versus is gonna be, baby. But yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into it. And uh, yeah, we got two doozies. That's right, two Samuel Hung involved action films, and it's gonna be cool to hear Robert's uh behind the scenes he was stories. The oh, yeah. And that's right. And Rick's got some stories, I'm sure, as well. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in. Oh, wait. First of all, those of you that are watching, thanks for hanging out. Those of you that are new to the channel, this is how Versus works, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the first film. We're going to go around the cycle. That's right. Yin and the Yang. We're going to talk about what we liked and what we didn't like about the film. And then we'll do the next one. And then at the end of the stream, towards the end, we will vote for which we think, for any reason, it could be for any reason. <laughs> it could be you could be biased. You could you could be any. You could be a critic about it. It could be any reason. But you get to vote for any reason which film you think is the better of the two. So that's how versus works. Sometimes I'll have a poll. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll give the community a shout out, and they get to vote as well. Sometimes we have guest uh, vid votes. Uh, but yeah, that's how versus works. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. 1990, she shoots straight. Which yes. you can watch right now on Haya streaming service, which I highly recommend you guys get that streaming service and watch Hi and watch she, she shoot straight because believe it or not, Samurai Guy, I've never seen this, Rick. <laughs> and thanks to Haya, non-sponsored, non-sponsored, thanks to Haya, I was able to to check it out. And uh I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But first, first, let's uh let's get the plot synopsis out of the way. So she Shoots Straight came out in 1990, directed by Corey Yuen, uh, starring Samo. You know who he is. Hung, the legend. Joyce Cadenzi, Tony Kafai Lung, uh, Karina Lau, Yuen Wah, many others. 
But the quick plot synopsis they have here is it says, straight after her marriage, Hong Kong officer Mina Kao faces dangerous faces a dangerous case of Vietnamese criminal refugees. Yes. And I, I, I love me some girls with guns genre films. I love that stuff. And uh, I enjoyed it. I mean, for what it was, I was entertained. I do have some nitpicks. So I'm going to get my, you know, bullshit out of the way. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the earlier action set pieces were really good. Uh, very entertaining uh, for the most part. I, I, I was cracking up at the beginning of the movie, Rick, where it was the show on the wedding and they're trying to fake you out with Samuel walking out with the girl. And then he go, and then Samuel Hunt goes, he's like, hey, stop talking. You know, it's not about us. <laughs> We're just the extras. The real star is about to arrive. And then they separate. That cracked me up. And then Joyce came out. I was the, the, the other joke, of course, is that Samuel's married to Joyce Cadenza. Right. Right. So the fact yeah. that he's getting married to somebody else behind him, you know, Gave the you know the audience got the he 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 he. Another thing. Oh, go ahead, Robert. Go ahead. The character name Mina. Mina. Just that's like Jackie uh, was always called Jackie. Right. That's yeah. that's what he calls his wife, Mina. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the, the, I thought that was a, a sweet little intro to yeah. you know introduce his wife there. Uh, but yeah, I thought she did well. I, I have to ask Rick. Poor thing. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Like what happened? Like after watching after watching the film, I, I was entertained by it. I highly yeah. recommend you guys check it out. But I was I was looking up. I went to IMDb to see if she did anything else like of, of similar, and 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 nothing. I couldn't find anything else. No, of course not. I think Bobby knows more about, if you'll excuse the expression, Bobby, the intimate details of this. Yeah. But from from my standpoint. Uh, it was Joyce never never wanted to be a star. Oh, I, I mean she's she did this as a favor, mm-hmm. you know, because when when you know when she and Samuel got together, it's just like the movie. And I I, I watched the latest uh, episode of She Hulk tonight, and it's also the similar. When Joyce came into a room, all eyes went to her. Mm-hmm. I mean she for for a Hong Kong person, she's incredibly striking. Very tall, very exotic looking. You know, the way they were treating her in the movie about being a half breed and all this sort of stuff. Uh, so, yeah, but she, but as Bobby, I'm sure, I hope, will co- uh, corroborate, she's a sweetheart. You know, the two two or three times I've met her, it's just like, well, she's, she's more than just a beauty. She's an angel. That's right. I mean, wow. she's got, nice. she's, and so it's like, why should she put herself through that? I, mean, I get it. Off Rock is happy to do that. But right. Joyce is not going to, you know, if she has a choice between between being a wife and mother, mm-hmm. that's what she's going to do. Is that true, Bobby? That is true. Um, she's like, like my sister, you know, I love her dearly. Um, she never really wanted to be like a star. That just was never her thing, you know? Um, when they say certain gimmicks in, in, in the Hong Kong films, basically, I mean, she, she was a gimmick to a, to a degree. Um, I think that her love for Samo transcends everything. I mean, she loves him more than, than, than air. That's her, that's her pride and joy. And, you know, Samo was married the first time his wife was Korean, but, uh, when he married, he really, really does love Mina. And it was just a special bond seeing them, you know, by living with them, um, it, it afforded me an opportunity to actually see the love that they have for each other. In addition, you know, her and I were closer in age together. Uh, so we we were able to communicate and talk a lot. And she told me about Chinese uh, culture and how to treat Chinese women. Um, I had a girlfriend at the time I would invite over to the house and, and I would just start eating. She was like, stop. You just have to serve the lady. And I was like, you know, just the traditional customs. And like, she's a devout Jehovah, Jehovah witness mm-hmm. and she's guided by spiritual principles, you know? So like, she's the best. Well, she's, wow. you know, she her three, her, 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 not to cut you off three signature no. films that she did that, that really stood That's out. What I was gonna say. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. License to steal. And also, you know, the one we're, we're doing tonight, she shoots straight. And my favorite, I told her, was Eastern Condors. 
I yeah, love I mean, that. Condors. Everybody's favorite. Her death scene in that was just unforgettable. Yeah. 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 The green yeah. eyes, man, and they do it to you. <laughs> yeah, but I thought she did a, a great job. So that was the that was one of the things I liked. I was very impressed. She held I was, she held up. She held up her. Yeah. Her, yeah. her the guy who taught her martial arts is uh um Lam Ching Ying. He taught her a lot of martial arts. Um, right. Nice, you know, nice. Samo made sure, you know, she studied with him pretty much through all three of those films that I mentioned. He was her instructor. Wow. Wow. Show. Nice, nice. Yeah. Here, let me uh hold on a second. Let me put the master up there to the left. What am I doing up there? <laughs> now that's better. <laughs> so Samar guy's the student. I'm the student. Let's, right now. Let's, let's, bang heads. let's bang heads, Bobby. Let's bang heads. <laughs> there you go. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, the other side, the other way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, that was, you know, the positives for me was the, the action in the movie was was very solid. It was entertaining. I liked her. Um, uh, some of the negatives, though, the, like little nitpicks here and there was, well, actually, one more positive. I actually liked uh, her character. She wasn't you know, she was the action lead, but she wasn't a Mary Sue. You know, the character really had to uh, go through a lot, you know, and she's shown her vulnerable side. I like that, you know. She wasn't just like Terminator from beginning to be, beginning, you know, beginning right, to the end of the movie. Right. And man, holy, holy shit. No spoilers. This movie's been out since 1990. Fuck it. Her, when, her, when her husband died, I was not expecting that at all. I was like, whoa, that surprised even me, man. I was like, whoa, you know, the character's husband in the in the yeah. film. I was Tony, Tony Lunkafi. I was like, wow, that was that was like that was crazy. My only nit, my only nitpick is after he died, the movie took a break. Um, and I, I get it, you know, character development and, and story and all that. I totally I get it, but no, no. <laughs> I'm being too nice. No, well, you know. A lot of this is a combination of movies. I'm. I should let you finish. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, like when uh, you know, it was the mother's birthday, and that scene drove me nuts. I was like, just fucking tell her her son's dead already. Jesus, she's gonna find out anyway. I mean, that scene felt like thirty minutes yeah, of on. them just sitting there trying to be nice, and that one to tell you know the the mother that your son's dead. But I, I get it; it's drama. But I just feel, you know, it just. I don't know. It felt like the movie went on vacation after that. There was no more hard boiled, you know, awesome action that we got in the beginning. Okay. And then the last 15 minutes, right. they were, it was good. The last oh, yeah. 15 minutes had some good stuff, yeah. but I'm going to, I'm going to be a little, I was a little disappointed. I thought you and was wasted. I really thought he was kind of wasted in the movie. And, um, I was kind of surprised the rest of the family didn't show up at the end to fight. I was kind of surprised about that because they were just as upset that their brother died and they already introduced them as a team. They've been a team throughout the whole movie. They've been on missions, you know, as a team. So I kind of thought they would show up at the end to help fight. But uh, what we got at the end, though, was still good. Yeah. It's still satisfying. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, really enjoyed it. Rick, thoughts on She Shoots Straight? Well, you know, of course, this was this was a 1990 movie. So I had already seen, you know, uh, more than a decade's worth of Hong Kong films. I'd been in Hong Kong. Uh, I was in Hong Kong. I don't think I was in Hong Kong when I saw this, but I was in Hong Kong to see Don't Give a Damn. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. So I'm with the Hong Kong films, and by this time, um, I'm trying to remember where I, when I met Vincent, who, uh, who I believe introduced me to you, Bobby. Yes. Uh, do you remember what year that was? Did I already? Oh, it, 1991 was Armor of God, right? Correct. So yeah, I hadn't met him yet. I met him in 91, 92. So 90, I saw she shoots straight, but I already knew how these films work. Mm -hmm. And think about it, Fat. Why would the film take a vacation if you know how Hong Kong films are made? It's because. You can't do that kind of action, especially with an untrained, well, she's slightly trained, an untried heroine. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes but sense. It's brutal. I mean, you can see yeah. you can see that she's, you can see where she's, uh, especially on Haya and their wonderful print of this, you, know, yeah. of this. you can see when she's doubled, but you can also see when she's not. Mm -hmm. 
And half the time, even in regular movies, like a good example is Arm of God, Jackie gets hurt, the movie goes on I hate us for six months, and then it's different when it comes back. Right. And also, this was this is not a Samo movie. This is a boho movie. Correct. This is Samo's company. Correct. Okay. But it's still produced by Samo, mm -hmm. and it was produced by Samo at a period where I mean I love the title "Don't Give a Damn" because that's really what Samo was feeling at that time. Yeah. You give a damn. I mean, you look at the sexism in She Shoots Straight, mm -hmm. you look at the racism in Don't Give a Damn. Mm -hmm. it's like, Sam was going, I'm laying it all out. I got nothing to lose at this point. Already, you know, he'd already gone through all of Golden Harvest's money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and people were turning on him because of uh, what was that, that movie where it combined um, two of the most popular series. And it was a huge failure because uh, um, Lucky Stars and Aces uh, Go Places. Uh, right. Lucky Stars Go Places was such a disaster. We're just kind of like, I'm just gonna lay it all out there. And he does this one, he makes a he makes a showcase for his wife. I don't know if she, were they married then? No. Okay. Made a showcase for his girlfriend, his fiance, mm -hmm. his future wife. Mm -hmm. but, but Corey is is directing it. And Correct. Huge difference, and also choreographing. Mm -hmm. Huge difference in the film is Corey versus Sam. You know, yes. If yes. you if you're like what what now that I've taken so much kung fu over the last twenty years, what Frank can do with opera, I feel I can do with kung fu. Movies. I can mm -hmm. see the difference in the choreography. Mm -hmm. and especially when I watched it, watched these movies again for tonight's show, I sort of went, "Yeah, this is this is a Corey movie. Mm -hmm. As such, it works well." The thing, of course, my issue, I loved each of these scenes. So I love Hong Kong melodrama. You know, the tearing out the hair and the sobbing and grabbing each other's guns and smacking each other. I mean, there were so many moments of hysteria. This is like. A whole year worth of Hong Kong soap operas in 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. But also, fight at the beginning, fight in the middle, fight at the end. That's how it is. My issue was okay. my biggest disappointment, or wish it had been better, is when she used her fist, when she used her legs, when she used her smarts. If I always say a woman should fight differently than men. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be trying to do the same thing men are doing. But the mm -hmm. older women, Corey choreographed the smaller women, the less lanky women, to fight the way they should fight. They were like little, they were like badges. Uh, and they didn't try to match the men when it came to punching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Joyce did, and I was going, oh, that's a show. I wish, because the rest, whenever she didn't do that, whenever, when she, as soon as she started doing this, yeah, that's fine. She uses her long limbs. Because mm -hmm. again, they say in Kung Fu, the longest weapon wins. Mm -hmm. And so when she uses her long limbs, I'm going, that's perfect. They should have concentrated on that. And at this, But at the same time, I'm sure Samuel and Corey wanted to show that she was, what's my favorite word? They wanted to show that she was bad. <laughs> and I wanted her to be smarter. <laughs> yes, she, yes, she does more stuff. I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the name of that wonderful woman who she fights at the end. Who is that, Bobby? Yeah. Oh, the, um, I, I can't think of her name right now. Yeah, you see, I'm blanking on her too, and I yeah. know who she is. Yeah. She was in that other, that, uh, the last, um, uh, the, dra uh, the dragons in, when the, when the three brothers were in Japan. Right. I can't think of her movie. name right now. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. When like, that scene, when that scene came up, it reminded me of, uh, Michiko from My Lucky Stars. Yeah, exactly. Same pause. Same pause. That is her. That's her. That's her. No, it's, uh, that's Michiko. I thought yeah. somebody. Uh, no. Well, well, this is Michiko. Yeah. But the but the girl at the end of She Shoots Straight, that's somebody else. Well, I don't think so. Really? Okay. Bobby, you're I, pretty, have, I gotta do research. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they're the same. She just looks different because of the makeup and all the rest. Of the stuff. But yeah, I think that's her. Okay. But I could, yeah. But be that as it may. 
So I enjoyed She Shoots Great, but it was a Korean movie. It was great for joy. Uh, it, it's insane. And, uh, but a wonderful, oh, thank you. A great perspective, but a wonderful look into the way when I was working with Ocean Shores back in the 80s in Hong Kong, I'll never forget the first day they're bringing me to this huge lunch, this huge dim sum lunch in this cavernous football field sized restaurant right next to a Shaw Brothers movie theater in Causeway Bay. On the way down in the elevator, because they were up on like the 70th floor or something ridiculous like that. Yeah. And on the way down, they told me how Asians feel about each other. All the guys at Ocean Shores were going, well, the Japanese hate the Chinese, the Chinese hate this person, the Philippines hate this, the Vietnamese hate this, and, 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 and then at the very end, just as we're getting to the bottom floor, they all turned and went, and everybody hates the Vietnamese. Wow. So watching this movie reminded me of, again, of just how uh -huh. mean-spirited Hong Kong could be. And there's the, the fact, oh, I also love Lam, seeing Lam Tin Ying, and of course, Yun Wa is in it. Yeah, and he, I, he's not Vietnamese, and the, the the woman is not Vietnamese. Uh, but that's okay. They're playing it, we're playing it straight that way. But it's an enjoyable movie, especially in comparison to the other movies on Haya. Haya has the best movies right now. They do. They, they do. have Sportsman. They have Kung Fu Stuntman. Mm -hmm. They have uh, the Final Master. Mm -hmm. They have all these awesome, and they have some of the dumbest and funnest ones, too, mm -hmm. like we showed at the uh, uh, Comic-Con. So, yeah, I would recommend, and I would recommend um, getting getting the free free month of, of Haya, because they also get the lost leaders. They get she shoots straight. They're mm -hmm. getting the black sheep of there. Yeah. So, no one else, nobody else has she shoots straight. <laughs> Nobody that's, else has it right now. That's because they're all trying to get the popular stuff, but they don't have mm -hmm. the knowledge that Haya has. So right. when they say, if you want she shoots great pot, I go, yeah, 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 yeah. We desperately want that. Right. Nobody else is smart enough to know that. But anyway, enough of me. What did you think? Tell me about being on the set with Corey Young. Yeah, that, at that hold, time. Hold on, hold on, hold on Bobby. Sure. Really quick. So <laughs> I, have to show, I have to show this image. Uh, this cracked me up in the movie. That's why I love Ewan Waugh so much. Uh, he's just one of the greatest movie villain actors of all time. The scene in the movie where it's supposed to be sad and dramatic at the funeral. Ewan Waugh's like, nah, motherfucker. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blowing up the casket at the funeral. <laughs> Brutal. I was Brutal. like, beautiful. Absolutely. Beautiful, Ewan. Brutal. We love you. <laughs> all right, go ahead. I, did, I forgot my yeah, at, wrote at, it. Yeah, at the time, uh, Chu Chi Ling was actually representing me. I wasn't super close with Samo at the time. Uh, so Chu Chi Ling was uh, representing me at, for about three or four years at that time. Uh, I remember I, I wanted to be in movies. He kept trying to get me roles. So he said, let me go introduce you. So that's where I met Corey for the first time. And he was like, can you teach him? Can you teach him how to do action for film? So while they were, especially the scene on the um, on the boat underneath where uh, Joyce is fighting. Yeah, that was, uh, I'm standing, actually standing there on the side with Chu Chi Ling. So that was, um, that was pretty cool watching that, but working with Corey stunt guys, uh, that, that was, that was kind of brutal. That was really my first indoctrination uh, into the tempo and style of how they did, how, of how they fought. Um, and it wasn't easy. Corey, uh, Corey was intimidating to me. Out of all the directors I've worked with, wow. he, he he has a certain demeanor that, like, he, he was a little scary to me, you know, at first, you know, because he has this he had this like blank face on, you know, look on his face. But um, he was, but then when he spoke, it was soft. It's a uh, Bobby, come with me. I was like, oh, okay, all right, that's different. That, that made me feel a little bit better, you know. But um, I was just rehearsing the timing and and, and learning with his stud guys. Um, so that that was a great opportunity to be involved with that. Uh, what I, did you think? Oh, go ahead, yeah. Rick. Go ahead. I was trying to remember whether it was Corey who kept throwing the peanuts at Vincent Lynn, or was that Jim <laughs> Wu? No, that was uh, that was Corey. That was oh, Corey. 
that, that was Corey. That was Corey. Yeah. yeah. That's hilarious. That's I remember hilarious. one time, man. Um, this is the uh, with, with, right while we was filming Don't Give a Damn. I went in take one with, with Samo. Uh, and so I go upstairs and I don't really drink like any kind of alcohol, dark, dark liquor, stuff like that. You know, I'm more of a wine guy. Um, and I'll never forget it. I went in there and they were all in there karaoke. And, and he opened this one door and it was Corey Yun in there with all these menacing looking Asian guys, right? And they just all stopped singing karaoke and they just stared at me. And then I was like, oh. And then this happened, right? This happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I felt like. So <laughs> then um, he was like, You drink? I was like, uh, Sure. And I know I didn't drink. Well, I don't know what that was a bad night for me, man, because I just kept going. It, it was a game that woo quite woo quite too. Every time I lost, I had to drink. And I mean, I, I got sick as a dog. But wow, it, it bettered my relationship with Corey, you know. So, nice. Nice. you know, I was very fortunate. This is why That's I don't have any relationships with them. Because- Say it. Yes. Uh, Jackie was saying that at the end of every movie, you have to have a drink with everybody. And it's yeah. always and <laughs> nice. he says it's amazing I have a liver. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't really drink the hard stuff. So, so Pat was uh, you, what you think of the movie itself? Yeah. Um, I thought the movie was very it had its good points and it and it had its weak 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 structure points. Um as a well, the action goes without saying. There's just a formula that Hong Kong films you oh, that's Shu Fu. He was one of the uh uh, stunt stunt guys who actually helped create that scene in the basement. Nice. In the boiler room. Um, he's also an assistant action director on Gambling Ghost as well. So, uh, but no, the film was good. Action is good. Story, uh, again, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Corey, but I'm, sometimes the way he carries drama, it's a bit just... You think it was know. a little bit overly dramatic? Yeah, Over they, the top. Over the top. Over the top right. is the best best way of explaining it. Um, but a, a good performance for, for Mina. She had an opportunity. Um, and she's just so charismatic in the film that she really kind of carries all of the bad points with her. Like, you don't really pay attention. You hear, you see, uh, okay, yeah, but you're looking forward to her next section or her next performance. Uh, she's, she's a good actress, too. You know, she's a natural. Um, yep. But again, you know, they played off of her Eurasian mix a lot. And I think that was a, a, a tool that they wanted to use as a selling point too, to make yeah. her kind of stand out. But <laughs> overall, I think the film was okay. Um, but again, I think the action was probably the, the biggest selling point for me. Right, yeah. right. And Corey, Corey have, I mean, I know you have, Bobby. I don't know if you have ever been to a a Chinese theater or a Hong Kong theater mm-hmm. and watch these movies with a Hong Kong audience. Yeah. Because, I mean, I first started it in Chinatown in New York, and it was in Chinatown, New York, when I started in 78, I was the only white guy in the house. Mm-hmm. There were some African-Americans, and they were all mostly Chinese, and me. Mm-hmm. And I, I noticed there what I noticed when I on my several visits um, in Hong Kong, when I work for Ocean Shores, when I work for Emperor Movie Group, when I go to the movie theaters there, there were there are certain kind of movies, matter of fact, the majority of them, where you don't go to watch the movie. You go to eat, to be with the family, to right. you know, pet the cats that are in the theater, and things like that. And these, <laughs> Corey understands that, these movies are made for, for that. So you have these huge breaks. You only have to watch the fight scene. The rest right. of it, you can just do other things. That's right. That's- oh, we got shout out to our four films in the house. Oh, there we go. Go. Hey, guys. What's up, man? Shout Good out to see you. Naka, Robert Jefferson, Collective yeah. Soul, Shane Bruschetti. Yeah. So, Rick, what you're saying, it's it's literally, it's an event. It's a, yeah, it's a fact. It's also similar to Bollywood. There's mm-hmm. a reason that Bollywood films and, and Hollywood films are three hours. Right, right. You get out of the house, you want to eat, you want to have a couple of meals. Gotcha. Go to the restroom, take a break. Right. Yeah. (laughs) In any case, 
Okay. All right. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Overall, uh, thumbs up for she shoots straight. I really yeah. enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, and and she like shoots straight. Oh, yeah. Oh, not uh, up. Sorry. Okay. 45. Sorry. 45. Yeah, forty. 45. <laughs> 45. <laughs> 45. Right there. Right there. Uh, <laughs> um. But uh, yeah, and, and people wonder why I was so hard and completely, utterly destroyed the travesty that was Interceptor. Oh, oh, that's oh, 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 that's oh, oh. because movies like She Shoots Straight exists. Hey, now but, you know why I'm hard on certain certain things, man. Which is movie. kind of funny. Go ahead, Rick. A bad movie is a bad movie. There are a lot of movies right now on Netflix. Yeah. With women as the leading action role, yeah, some of them are okay. Some of them are terrible. Interceptor was was insulting, insulting. Yes, that. yes, right. well said. <laughs> which respect. is kind of which is kind of funny because technically we could have did a versus of oh, she's huge straight versus Interceptor, well, Interceptor. Because well, we have yeah. two action, two action Terrible. actors' wives getting v, uh, lead v, lead action movie vehicles. So that could have worked too. I'm what pretty sure in Interceptor would have got destroyed, of course. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and go on to uh, Don't Give a Damn. Uh oh, Scarlet. Frankly, well, I don't give a damn. Well, title. Right. Well, 1995. That, that, 1995. Yeah. Released right, in '95, read... shot in '94. There we and go. There we go. The Chinese the... title is uh, Momin Bay. Nice, nice. Let me read the plot synopsis for the for those who have not seen it. Samuel Hong plays a cop on the trail of Doug, excuse me, drug dealers. Customs officer Yun Biao is investigating the same gang. Samuel's new partner is eager beaver Takeshi Kaneshiro. Despite each having their own ideas on how best to proceed, they are teamed up together and must put aside their differences in order to crack the case. Romance, plot twists, Comedic asides, and of course, plenty of fights bring the film to a climatic and bruising conclusion. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, we, we know who directed this, this badassity here. That's right. Samuel Sorry. himself. Uh, man. Also, that's right. That's right. Also starring, you know, big shout out to Colin Chow, man. That's right. Uh, nice thing, my brother. That's right. That's right. We share, the, yeah, same, we sh we share the same birthday, and we were both Samuel students. That is awesome. That is awesome. So uh, uh, I will go foist. I will go foist here. Uh, yeah, I got lucky. I came across this. This was actually on YouTube. And uh, before I got yanked. <laughs> right. uh, and now there's a botched part, you know, uploaded as parts, but it's all botched. It's all screwed up version, uh, which I don't recommend because it's they don't even show the whole movie. But I got lucky. So and uh, what I saw was really entertained. It's just something about. Just the man, the sound design, the speed, the timing, just the brutality, the hits, man. Those that's how you hit. That's, that's right. how you fucking hit. I'm I'm just like, this is this is up, this is up my alley. This is right up my alley. Gunfight shooting, explosions, and yeah. of course, you know, Samuel Hung with his touch of comedy yep. and all that. But when it got to the three-way dance, I will let I will let Bobby take over with that because we have some behind the scenes exclusive photos that Bobby has shared with us tonight. So you guys are in for a treat. I go, I'll show that here tonight. But yeah, I, I lost my mind. I was like, is this happening right now? Like, this is amazing. You know, like this is amazing. So overall, really enjoyed. Uh, don't give a damn. There is negative. Well, I'm sure Rick will mention it. <laughs> <laughs> Rick yeah. will mention it. He kind of mentioned Rick. Rick, Rick, Rick kind of mentioned it already. Uh, but yeah, besides that awkwardness, mm -hmm. despite the awkwardness, uh, overall, just it's just Samuel Hung, you know, the, 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 just at his, you know, top of his unleashed. game. Unleashed, Samuel Unleashed. Samuel Unleashed. There you go. We're gonna retitle the movie. <laughs> but yeah, really enjoyed. Uh, don't give a damn. Thumbs up. That's right. Uh, Rick, thoughts. Yeah. On Don't Give a Damn. Well, I was in Hong Kong uh, when it came out, and uh, I was work. I, I was starting work with Emperor Movie Group, and um, I'd heard 
And what's great about working at a, at a Hong Kong film company is that the rumors about about Canto Wood were going all the time. So everybody was saying, oh, oh my gosh, Samo, Samo's just, Samo, Samo, their attitude, and I couldn't disagree with them uh, after seeing the movie and the other movies of this era, like Pantyhose Hero. Mm -hmm. And I mean, all of them, awesome fights, but he was just challenging the status quo with each of them, not because he wanted to broaden the, the industry or cinema, it's because it was kind of like, <laughs> it was just like, I got I got nothing to lose. Let's put it this way. My feeling is that he was standing there and he might as well be wearing a t-shirt that says, I'm too talented for you to get rid of me. <laughs> but I'm going to test you. I'm going to see how far I can push. <laughs> and, and also, it's kind of like, you know, and also he says, Tell me if I'm wrong. You're Hong Kong. You're the Hong Kong people. You're sexist. You're racist. I'm just putting it out there, and I'm making and I'm pointing to it in an entertaining way, and I'm and I'll take the hit for you. I'll take the hit for you. You can beat me up all you want. You know I can take it. That's in his. That's in Samuel's character, as I understand him, as I understand him from other people like Jackie and and others. And, and you, Bobby, not you, but Cynthia and others who have worked with him and, and know him well. Um, so in any case, um, so it, it, it was Sam on leash. So when I saw it in the theaters and I, and I was already reacting to the little comments that his character was making in the, in the station house and other things. But when we got to that scene, yeah. I just sort of went, I mean, that was me in the theater going, oh man, really? Okay. Uh, so, and then of course I met you, Bobby, and it was like, all right, so you tell me, tell me. And then I met him mm -hmm. and found out what a, what a, what a wounded gentleman he was. I mean, Whenever we saw each other over the years, I believe his reaction to me coming in, because I would in, invariably come in after a parade of other Guaylo idiots. And they would all not understand him, not know what else he had done. I mean, he, you know, he had just had to sit there and talk to all these New York uh, film reporters who were ignorant of Kung Fu, who were ignorant of his work. And so when I would come in, he would just light up. Mm -hmm. so, however he felt about me, he knew I knew. Yeah. And he also knew that I I thought he was extraordinary. Yeah, you can't get rid of him. Even today, he's the last man standing. Mm -hmm. That's right. He's just so talented. But he's also self-sabotaging. And that's what he did with these, these films. But it was still... And I was so happy to see it again just for this thing. Because now I'm over it, because I know the background to it, which Bobby will tell us in a moment. Yeah. And it's kind of like, keep up the good work, Sam. So, right. I, I will say this, because I've never, this is really the first time I'm really kind of like publicly talking about this issue. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a touchy subject for me. You know, yeah, most of the audience don't know what we're talking about. Do you want to tell them or should I? Uh, um, I'll tell them. Okay. So in, in, in Don't Give a Damn, there's a scene um, which is just flat out racist. Um, and the jokes that were told were completely insensitive um, and just, just like, wow eye-catching but i think i need to explain the backdrop to to how that happened so when i first started living with samo for like the first year and a half i didn't really do anything there were no movies being made he wasn't doing anything he was just at home uh he moved out of one house and moved into another house and i was helping him with that um but he really wasn't doing any movies at that time so 
I talked to him. I was like, well, are we, what's going on? And he was having financial problems. He was having problems finding investors to invest in films for him. Um, I remember going to coffee shops every other day, meeting people from Macau, people from Japan, all over uh, businessmen that, you know, wanted to invest money in films. Um, but at the time, Samo had a little, you know, people knew he was playing with the horses a little bit. And that kind of, people were, were, were worrying about their money, their investments, that sort of thing. But Samo wanted to come back. He wasn't doing that no more. He wasn't gambling anymore, but he, he, he needed to get a foothold and come back with a vengeance. I remember we used to watch the American uh, police drama shows and he would say, let's, let's do a film like that. Let's, you know, police drama, like um, David E. Kelly did a, a, a television series, Shaky Cam. I can't think of the, 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 the name of the show right now. It was, I don't know if it was NYPD something. NYPD Blue. Yeah, he loved NYPD Blue Jacket upstairs. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, that was that was what Don't Give a Damn really was conceptualized about. Um, at the time, he did manage to we did manage to find some investors to fund the film. But the writer of the film was in, was related to the investors, um, and his name was Philip. And him and I didn't really get along too well. I wonder why. And uh, I felt like he had, because when we were conceptualizing and we were on the daily boards trying to come up with ideas and, and scenes and everything, he kept throwing like jokes in there. But I would say, I I, I don't think that's, uh, you know, that's not, he said, really, you don't think that'd be fun? No, I don't, you know, but I'm from America. They didn't understand that, you know, racism is was an issue here, especially with African-Americans. Um, this had nothing to do with Samo. This this was basically the writer, um, mm. and I'll never forget this particular scene um, where Yin Biao has to put the the wig on, and and the, the there was a, a joke that was written uh, that particular day. Um, Samo wasn't there when the guy was actually on set, the writer, and it was the the B director that came in to do that scene, and the jokes were like blacks rape and rob every 10 seconds in New York. You see, I, I, it's 30 years ago, but I still remember it, you know? And I just, you know, the, the worst part about that was actually having to sit in the theater with Yin Wu Ping and every other luminary in Hong Kong at the grand, at the premiere and, and, and actually see it. But the, the benefit of that was that a lot of the Asian people were uncomfortable with that as well. Oh, because really? Yeah, because wow. at the end of the film, they came up to me, Yun Wu Ping, especially, and they said, your performance was magnificent. You know, they said, well, you, you were absolutely fantastic in the film. Um, and I got a lot of offers after that film. Um, in fact, I got offers to do regular films in Hong Kong, which is the first for African-American um, and not action oriented films. Um, but yeah, that was that was a difficult time. But Samuel really didn't have any control. Let's 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 just put that out there at that time. Gotcha. Yeah, his film company produced it, but the funding came from from someone else. Um, he's not a racist um, because he let an African American <laughs> from America, from the ghetto, um, move into his house <laughs> and live with his family. Um, there's a certain amount of trust there, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I know Samo, the person, and he's a kind and caring person and is not a racist bone in his body. He, he, he loves, he loves blacks. He loves whites. He loves everyone. Um, so I always felt like it was my duty to kind of protect Samo for this film. Um, because I just think that people took advantage of him when he was at, at the weakest point. Um, so yeah, that that's my perspective on that. And when you see the film, you, you, you'll see. The film is actually pretty good, actually, you know? Um, it's just that just that one, one piece kind of mars it, but I'll let Rick yeah. explain from his point of view. Well, you know- yeah, so That's what I was saying, it was, I, 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 I really enjoyed it a lot. It was just that 
that's why I said it was that one awkward, <laughs> like, okay, all right. But yeah, go ahead, Rick. That's why it's so difficult to see the movie because of that one scene. That one scene is just like spectacularly stupid and racist yeah. and obvious. And it, right. it poisons the film. Uh, the fights are great. I mean, uh, same thing again with Pantyo's hero. She shoots straight and the others, the others that Samuel did at that time. But that scene, I mean, putting two two Asians in blackface and the nappy wigs, they don't look any, and they're supposed to be uh, Sam, uh, Bobby's character's brother. And Bobby's supposed to think that these guys who look nothing like that are his. <laughs> and it's like, really? So you're sitting in the, in the theater going, this is just clearly the act of a racist person who wanted to, you know, again, it's like somebody saying that all Mexicans are drug pushers and racist and uh, racist. They did that with the African-Americans in this thing, and it's just as stupid and untrue. But unfortunately, it's in a movie by one of the most awesome people in the Kung Fu film business, and also a showcase for a magnificent African-American actor, stuntman, action star so uh it it always it's just it's just as bobby is making it clear no matter how good the rest of the movie is and it's the rest of the movie is a samuel film it's it's got a bad taste it's a bad taste in your mouth you Not know, enough. yeah good i've always wondered why well i know why that film wasn't picked up you know but i just felt as though like you know it should be just cut out. I just don't, it, it just does, it's not appropriate, you know, especially in today's era. Yeah, very much so. But at the same time, it is representative of that era of what Samuel was doing. And it's representative of, I mean, again, it's the rest of the, the rest of the movies that alluded to it, this movie just went flat out and said, you know, we're, we're racist against black. And not everybody, of course. Mm -hmm. But then again, I just finished, we were talking about Devil in a Blue Dress today. And I, and as a, as one of, as uh, the consultant for media for the Mystery Writers of America, and I did that for many years, I had always wondered why there was never a sequel to that incredibly awesome movie. And I, whenever I was in Hollywood afterwards, I would research it. And I found out it was standard, Hollywood standard operating racism. You know, I saw them do it to Jackie. I saw them do it to African Americans. Uh, there's a, I was a famous cock, I was at a cocktail uh, party, and I was with William Link, the creator of Colombo and Murder She Wrote, the co-creator, both of which I consulted for, and he went to a producer of a new series of mystery movies that were on NBC that were failing. There was one based on Aaron Elkins's books about a art researcher who gets involved in mystery. And even though that's a white character in the book, when they made the TV show of it, they cast Louis Gossett Jr. because uh, he had just gotten an Oscar. And, and I watched the premiere of it and it was astonishingly bad. Uh, because it had nothing to do with the book. They tried to turn it into this urban piece of nastiness. And hmm. The book was a playfair, you know, a soft, a soft mystery, a soft boil. Me. And so I talked to Bill Link about it when we're going to that cocktail party. He said, well, you know, I feel the same way. I don't know what the F happened with that. Let's go ask him. So we went and asked the showrunner. I'm not going to say what the showrunner said, but I'll stand up. The showrunner looked, I mean, they're at a cocktail party, a Hollywood cocktail party, and I discovered this, a lot of Hollywood cocktail parties are like this. The producer looked at Bill Link, who was one of the most awarded men in television history, and said, well, what did you expect, Bill? They saddled me with an N-word. They wow. saddled me with the N-word. Yeah. And I just sort of went, you just said it. What did you expect? Though? They saddled me with 
That's how Hollywood acts. I could tell you all sorts of stories about Alien 3 and other things like that, where they do it to women. But, and of course, I told you the story of when they did it to Jackie in the elevator after showing Police Story at the New York Film Festival, where they said, where the, the studio executive said, Americans will never accept the Chinese star. And we all went, what about Bruce Lee? And he went, oh, he was Mr. Jackson. He said yeah. that in front of Jackie Chan. Mm -hmm. The standard operating racism of mm -hmm. Hollywood. So it's nothing new, at least. Yeah, that's right. They're open about it. And thankfully, we got we got Marvel and Black Panther now. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, yeah. but I guess, our, but no, we've got, we, uh, why am I talking? We've got all this wonderful pictures and background stuff on the set. <laughs> yeah, enough of you. <laughs> well, so, uh, go ahead, Robert. No, no, outside of that, the film was a was a, just an honor to work with so many Hong Kong luminaries in that film. You know, mm -hmm. the two films I had, uh, Hong Fok Chai Tian, uh, Gambling Ghost, and uh, Mumi Bay, Don't Give a Damn. Just Starfield, James Tian, Lam Ching Ying, Chung Fa, you know, everybody that we've all grown and loved. You know, I had Lo Lei, God rest his soul, you know. Um, I just, I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to share the screen with so many, so many luminaries. And don't get Blackie Co. God rest his soul. He was in Don't Give a Damn as well. Um, just so many in Don't Give a Damn. Now, I heard a rumor that this was supposed to be the last Three Brothers movie. Is that true? It was. It was. It absolutely was. Wow. Jackie, Jackie was supposed to be in this film. Jackie was supposed to be in this film. Wow. And what's funny is this. Uh, i never forget, I got um, Samuel calls me into the office and I go in there. He says, listen, uh, Jackie wants to use you in this film. I said, oh, oh okay, great. So I'm, I'm at the top of the world. You know, I'm about to work for Jackie, Samu, and Yun, and, uh, Yun Wah Ping. Um, the next, the very next day, I go into the office, you know, I, I, that night I couldn't sleep. I'm like, my God, I get to do a movie, Samu. I'm getting ready to do Jackie. I said, this is it. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at that level. I walk in that room. And he's like, oh, Bobby, come here, come here. I'm like, uh, like oh, Diva, like, boss, what's up? He says, um, Jackie pissed me off last night. I, I, yeah. like, what? I said, and I went, I went like this. I said, what? And I, not realizing what was coming, he said, yeah, yeah, he pissed me off. Oh, you're not doing the movie. You're not doing the movie. I was like, yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay, I won't do the movie. Right, you know, well. I can't do the movie. I was under contract with Bojan anyway. In Hong right, Kong, right. how it works, though, when you work with certain uh, Hong Kabans or other uh, stunt groups, you, you you have to kind of get permission before you start going everywhere, you know? Um, I, yeah. I, I couldn't work with Yun Mo Ping until I had Samuel's Blessing. I couldn't work with Chong King Ting, Alfred Chung, Cop on the Run, until I had Samuel's Blessings. Um, I was Hong Gaban, so I stayed with Samuel, you know? So it that hurt. But the ir irony is funny because we both opened up in Hong Kong at the same time, the same day, in the same theater. Don't give a damn on this side, rumble in the Bronx on this side. So it was a wow. battle at the box office at the same time. So wow. um, that's that's the irony of that. Now I'm looking, <laughs> I'm looking at the, I'm looking in Hong Kong, I'm looking at the billboard, and I'm saying I'm I'm supposed to be in both of these films. Ah. You know, but, <laughs> you know, it is what it yeah, is. That, it is that wasn't is. God's plans. But don't yeah. give a damn. I had fun. Um, the, the action just was incredible. I learned so much working with with uh, Jen Galok, Jen Siu Ho, Lau uh, Lau Ka Wing, because uh, him and Samuel were very close. You know, from um, Odd Couple. Yeah, uh, yeah. In fact, he was uh, he was second unit director quietly, quiet as kept. Um, there was just so many, so many people I, I, I saw in that film, and that was the film that really kind of changed for me, because Samuel was like, "You just want to be an actor?" I said, "No, I, I want to be a director." He said, "Well, then follow me," um, and he would set the camera up, and he was like, "I'm using this particular lens for for this particular piece of action," you know. And after we film, then we go back to the office, and he'd be editing on the Steinbeck, you know, the traditional way of editing. Um, so, so yeah, I was very fortunate to see all of that. You know, I was in the editing room with John Wu when he was editing a better tomorrow that, that blew yeah. my mind film workshop wow. days, with, uh, wow. Choi Hark, you know, so I know that I've been blessed 
Um, but don't give a damn to me will always be special in a good way and in a bad way, you know? Right. Um, I right. think, I think my performance overshadowed the bad part basically, because I wasn't in that particular film. It, I wasn't a gimmick at the end right. of the movie. A lot of times I use the Guaidos, uh, as gimmicks, you know, they, you see them and you see them for a second in the beginning, Ooh, henchmen. They may appear in the middle and then they have their little battle at the end and they're gone, you know? Right, right, right. My character, it was kind of developed throughout the entire film. So, right. um, and it was central to the storyline. So, yeah. so for that, you know, I, I'm a very appreciative that Samuel did that for me. Nice. So before we uh, move on here and uh, show some of these behind the scenes photos, thank you, Robert, for, sure. for sharing this with us. Uh, before sure. we do that, though, uh, again, big thanks to, to you, uh, Bobby and Rick for uh addressing the, the the minor negativity in the film addressing yeah. it but you know it, it, it but clearing the air mm -hmm. uh you know that samuel is not racist no. <laughs> and and i have I, I might i don't know if this i don't know if this counts mm -hmm. but i have a little a little uh, example of that okay uh, when uh they re-released pedicab driver in hollywood in the chinese theater down there in hollywood and I, I went down there to see it. I want to see Pedicab Driver on the big screen, man. Well, Samo was there, and he did the opening uh, panel and talked, you know, uh -huh. kind of a Q and A thing. We watched the movie. The audience, we all loved it. Benny Jitterkitas was over there. We were all having a good time. And then after it was over, everybody was leaving. And of course, you know, Sam, right? I'm like, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Sam, Samo hung's down in front. Right. I gotta try to sneak down there. So I go down there, and, and nobody was approaching Samo. Everybody was leaving. Right. And there were some bodyguards down there and I go down there to meet him and he's like kind of far away on the other side. And I asked, you know, hey, can I get a quick photo with Samo? And and they they stopped me because, you know, their bodyguards are doing their job. And then they they turned to Samo and they were like, you know, photo or whatever. And Samo said, eh, <laughs> he's like, bring him on. <laughs> he let, let, let him through. Right. Right. And I, I got my photo with him. I wish I could share it. Uh, I used to have it in, in StreamYard, but I took it out to make room. Uh, but there you go. There's Samurai Guy's little little uh, uh, experience with the with the legend there. Before we, we don't see your picture, let's see his picture. All right, here we go. All right, boom! I love this shot. Oh yeah, I remember <laughs> this one. Yeah, me, Yun Biao, and Samo just relaxing. Yeah, we had a great time that day too. I think we were shooting the uh, the base, the um, bottom of the police station. Actually, this is the day that I qualified for my uh, Hong Kong Stuntman's Association card. Nice. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Next. There we go. Uh uh Jimmy, um, Samuel's son. Uh he was he was my best friend, man. Like that was my brother, man. I love him. I miss him. Um he's still actually he's doing he's an action director now. Oh, all right. Yeah, he's an action director. Uh Happy Hesky, Roy Filler, Ken, my, my brother, God rest his soul. That was another one. And, and, and Happy Hesky, uh, the, the, the gentleman uh, with the gray jacket, he was Australian kickboxing champion. He went on to do Mr. Nice Guy uh, with Samo. Um, that was, he, they, we were all part of the Guaido Seven, the first Western stunt team in Hong Kong that nice. I, uh, I got signed to um, to a major uh, production company in, in Hong Kong. Nice. Yeah, he was badass in the movie too. Oh, yeah. Uh, my brothers, Magu. And Peter Chan and um, Eddie Ma, God rest their souls. You know, they were it's just amazing. I used to talk to Peter about uh, Enter the Dragon, him and Bruce. So, ah, uh, Kenishiro, my brother. <laughs> he, he, he's a prankster, man. He's a prankster. He used to prank me all the time on set, always uh, coming up behind me, doing crazy stuff. But uh, yeah, that's, he. He was a great guy. He could sing his behind off too. Uh, oh, look, ferocious, ferocious, ferocious. There you go, ferocious. Me and Samo. I even remember <laughs> my dialogue from that scene. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I still, I, I know we talked about it a long time ago, uh, Bobby, but I'm loving the hair, man. Oh uh, yeah, uh, thank you. <laughs> That's some '90s shit right there. Y'all yeah, don't know about that. Yeah. I just wanted, to, I wanted to stand. You know, that was one thing in Hong Kong. Yeah. Not many barbers for African American here, right, so right, right. Um, Samuel bought me some. He came back to America for for a guest appearance, and he brought me some 
clippers back. So I started doing my own hair, you know, actually he brought me a lot of stuff. He had to bring me some shoes back. He had to bring me some, some clothes back because I was too big. The, the Asians over there, the, you know, the clothes, the large really wasn't a large. It was a small for me, you know? And when I said size 13, why for, for shoe, they was, they looked at me like I was crazy. Like, <laughs> you know, that's so, a house. We, 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 right, we, right. Uh -huh. That was crazy. Uh, here's a quick little example of how ferocious Bobby was in the film. Come on, motherfucker! Come on, you want to be sick? Yeah, fuck you! Come on, come on, motherfucker! Yeah. So let me tell you something about that scene. That's the first day of filming the entire movie. Oh but shit! Happened, yeah, but something happened that day. That was not supposed to be a gun battle. That was actually supposed to be a fight between ah. Dion Lamb, myself, Eddie Ma. But what happened was this. There was an old wood factory that, that we shot that in, okay, out in the new territories. And the, the minute I walked on set, those plank boards that you see there, I twisted my ankle. Oh. And I mean, I twisted it to the point where it it, it just blew up like a balloon oh. before cameras even started rolling on the first day. Oh. So everybody's scrambling and everything. And I had combat boots on, fortunately. Yeah. So I just grabbed the boots and I just like, because I, I was determined I was not going to blow this. You know what I mean? Right, I, right, I, right. I hadn't done any work with Samo because I said I was just laying around for a couple of years over there with him just doing nothing. But this was the comeback. Um, so I just laced the boots up real tight and tightened it. But every time I walked, you could see the the the, the limp and I, I just couldn't do any kicking and punching. So right. Samo, the genius that he is, <laughs> he said, you know what? We're going to revamp the entire scene. We're going to turn this into a major gun battle. So that's what we did. Nice. Loved it. I loved it. Look at this. Yeah. Silent. Silent. <laughs> yeah. You know, actually, we had some, um, we had some, uh, oh, we haven't got to that one yet. Uh, Chinese special forces actually come in and, and rehearse with us and train us for, for, for four or five days before we, we did that scene because that scene was just so involved. Dude, that 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 heist action shootout sequence was yeah, just it was pretty it was intense. Pretty crazy. Oh, I loved it. And again, like I mentioned earlier, just the impact of the hits. Here's another little taste. So for that scene, <laughs> when he grabbed me by my neck and he went up, yeah, he, he knocked the tooth out in the back of my of my mouth. <laughs> so it's rolling. I, I spit it out. I got blood coming out of my mouth. I got my tooth in my hand. He's looking at me. He's like, "Bobby, you okay?" Uh, no. <laughs> at that, <laughs> he's like, "He's like, fight, 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 Tell him to give me some water uh, quickly. So I got water. He said, rinse your mouth. He, he acted like he's so concerned. He said, rinse your mouth. Rinse your mouth. I rinse my mouth. He said, oh. He said, you got the tooth, right? He said, put that in your pocket. Ooh. Put it in the pocket. He said, okay, let's go back to work. And I'm I'm, I'm like, huh? <laughs> you know, you caught me <laughs> off guard with that one. Like, that's the Hong Kong style, man. You, yeah, yeah, you get yeah. hurt, you know. You, you go back wonder to work. why Nina Kodensi doesn't want to do more movies? Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense. That makes sense, Rick. Yeah, you get hurt. Mr. Clown right here. So this particular scene, I'm going to tell you what happened here. That zebra behind us. When, when Sam and I was rehearsing this particular three-way battle, I used to always make contact with him, but he said my arms were very hard. So he said, Bobby, stop fucking hitting my arms so hard. He said it just like that. Stop hitting my arms. So I said, okay, no problem, Daigo. Did it again and bang, 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 bang. I did it again. He said, I'm not going to tell you again. Stop hitting my fucking arms like that, right? <laughs> I said, okay, I go, sorry, Moesia, you know? Uh -huh. So then uh, on action again, I went pop, 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 pop. And I didn't think I did it, right? He said, like, okay, cut, cut, cut. He said, all right, good job, Bobby. He said, hold on a second. So he leaves. He walks around the corner. He comes back. 
there were some metal rods in the uh, in the area where we were filming. He took those metal rods and he put them in his arms. I kid you not. <laughs> and then he said, "Okay, let's do it again one more time. Okay, one more." That is it. He said, "eBay and action." And he started going, ah, like Samo does. Yeah, and yeah. I had lopes and whoops all over me. He says, okay, you see what I mean? Not too hard. Yeah. He told me a very valuable lesson. That, that, that was just a funny antidote that uh, <laughs> was over there, you know. Ah, this was a very, very complicated scene. We had uh, six action directors for this scene. Yun Biao, Jing Ah Lok, um, Miguel Wong, uh, Ngai Singh. And Samo and uh, Lao Ka Wing. Everybody had a hand in this three way battle. This was probably one of the toughest action sequences that I've ever had to do in my entire life. Yes. And before I show the timing, uh, the timing. Yes, the timing. Said, the overhead shot really kind of puts it all in perspective. Yes, the that's timing. that's my favorite. That's my favorite shot of, that, of the whole fight. Each one of us had to kind of feel when the other one was moving and then when to block and when to strike and when to move. And it, it was just, it was a complicated dance, but uh, yeah. that was a uh, Chin Galok's genius uh, action direction right there. Just, just, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that was all uh, right. So, before we get to the above shot, which is my favorite part of the three way dance. Really quickly, for those that are that are watching right now, I remember a long time ago. Just a, just a quick reminder, uh, Bobby, when you're on my channel, like way back last year. Yeah. Just remind everybody that there are no wires on Bobby jumping up and grabbing uh, the railing. And go ahead and talk about it. Uh yeah. There, there's this just straight action. You know, who prepared me for this film was uh Colin Cho. Colin nice. Cho trained me every single day to get me up to speed every single day um and what helped me was he was he, he's from taiwan and just he's built like an american he's not built like the chinese his body stature is that of of, of a western man um so i could kind of follow his direction a little bit more so than i could some of the other stunt guys you know he was more suited as as like as an american style fighter um but I mean, let me tell you something. He's probably one of the best I've ever worked with. Phenomenal. I mean, his skill set was just phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. You know, he was in the Taiwanese army when Samuel first met him. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. But yeah, that, 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 when that, he got out, you know, he yeah, hooked yeah. him up. Yeah, that, that scene, though, when you jump up, grab the railing, you're holding it with one arm, and yeah. then you're turning, you're, you're doing, well, I'm pointing up my hat. Yep. You're turning, <laughs> you're turning in the air like that. Kicking yeah. Samuel, no wires, guys. No now, wires on that. That, just... that was that that particular technique yeah. was nice seeing Colin Cho. He's the one who designed that particular part. So wow. it was like six action directors that designed that whole entire scene. Do you have the scene, Pat? Which one? The above shot? Driving. I just showed it. Show it again. Okay, we'll show it one more time. Uh tell you another thing that blood you see coming out of nice things nose i kicked him in his nose oh. Oh. <laughs> well i tell you what 
It happened. That kick that, that kick that you saw Samuel kick me with and that kick that he planted me with through that door, there was no wires. That's how hard he kicks. Impact. He kicked me straight through that door. Oh, it, I love it. I love it. But now I'm going to show the, 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 the above camera angle shot that yeah. Bobby was talking about. It. I want you guys to look at this. I'm greedy, okay? <laughs> you guys know I'm greedy. I want more. I want more, God damn it. But for just this little snippet, it's it blew my mind. It blew my mind. You can study this. That's right. Filmmakers out there, you can break down the fight choreography in this fight and study this. But here we go. I'm going to play it. Enjoy. <laughs> I, I gotta show it again. <laughs> I gotta show it again. The, the most difficult action sequence I've ever did. Folks, enjoy it. You will never see its like again. Nope. Because at this well point, said. filmmakers care more about their actors than they used to. I mean, it took, all it took for, for that overhead scene, it took two days because of the timing. Yeah. The timing. If you, if you watch it again, you see how I move left, right, Samo moves right, left, Colin Cho. It's just, it's a perfectly choreographed dance, but it's the timing that makes it work so well. And you see, I actually am not that crazy about it because everybody's fighting the same. Mm -hmm. There's no character in that. It's it's a melee, which is awesome. It works perfectly in the film. But one of the reasons I like more modern choreography is that you can involve character and plot rather than just know how badass you are. Right. It's amazing. <laughs> Don't let Rick ruin your fun and enjoyment. No, I, I'm not ruining it. <laughs> I care more about Bobby and Colin than you. Just kidding. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I love this part uh, about the fight, Bobby. Before you guys get down, you have that right. moment where you're right. you're. You're all looking at each other like, oh, shit, who do we <laughs> who right. fight who? I love that. Well, you know, I don't even think we have to vote at this point. <laughs> we still got some more photos. Uh, right? Yeah, oh, <laughs> Cho Wing, Cho Wing, the guy with the uh, red jacket on. I tell you, he's one of the hardest kickers I've ever worked with, ever. Nice. I seen him take one kick and kick a uh, soccer ball out of the stadium. It's incredible. <laughs> This was crazy when Colin got on top of you and they had him on the That was wires. actually a very painful scene to do <laughs> because the guys had to hoist him up on the wire and he had to actually spin, but he couldn't spin too much to choke me out. So right. that was very difficult because that was really around my neck and it was just spinning. And we just had to hope that he, that's why I say Colin was the best. He, he knew how to stop it right at the mark. So I wouldn't die. That's Samo supervising the scene right there. Nice. And of course, my favorite shot. Uh, yeah. The three, <laughs> the three brothers. Yes. All right. All right. Like Rick said, I, I think you all know which which movie we're gonna vote for in terms of pure action, <laughs> adrenaline. Um uh Rick, just just for the hell of it, as tradition, who are you voting for? What Penny movie? Hero. Any <laughs> All right. Don't give a damn for Rick. Bobby, I know. Go ahead and say it. Uh, she shoots straight. I'm just like, don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> don't give a damn. Don't give a damn, of course. Momin Bay. Uh, hey, nice. If we, were, if we were doing it Eastern Condors. Ooh. Oh, yeah. by far, Eastern yeah. Condors. Yeah. That is my <laughs> favorite film. I, I love that film so much. I had to talk to uh, uh, 
Frank, uh, uh, DeJing, and say, listen, could you please talk to them and get me a copy? And thank you so much, Frank, man. I love you. Thank you, nice. y'all guys. Uh, you guys hooked me up. Um, Eureka gave me a box set, and it is nice. phenomenal. Nice, nice. I say uh, maybe in the future we get all of us, including Frank, Rick, on here, and let's just review Eastern Condors. Let's just do I'm it. I'm with that. I'm with that. In the future, let's do it. I am yep. definitely with that. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Y'all know what I'm going to vote for. You guys already know. But before I, I play the video, the winner video, uh, we were supposed to have one more person tonight, Bobby. Uh, but this video is from my friend, Alex Chung, martial artist, uh, actor, stuntman. Right? He, he He's a great dude. He's been on yeah. the channel several times. He's actually been on some Versus episodes. He couldn't make it tonight. But you wanted me to play this for you, my friend. First off, I want to say, what's up, everyone? Sorry I couldn't make it tonight. Um, Don't Give a Damn is a really special one for me. I remember seeing it at a very early age on a VHS from Chinatown, and it really stuck out to me, especially the three-way fight at the end. I remember after watching the movie, I immediately grabbed my action figures and tried to recreate fight scenes of that intensity and complexity, and it really left an impression to the point where years later, believe it or not, when we're making our movie contracts for the end fight, even though it's not a three-way, it's a two-on-one, that fight scene from Don't Give a Damn was in my mind while we were making it, and it continues to influence me to today. I think because it set a standard of action in my mind, especially for three-way fights, that hasn't really been matched in my opinion. So thank you for creating something so cool that has inspired my work in so many ways. Wow, man, it means a lot, dude. Yeah. Wow, you got me with that one. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so, so much. That means a lot. Yeah, I wonder nice. why it hasn't been matched. No, Because, again, yeah. you don't want to hurt people. I mean, yeah. you could say Bobby just that line saying, hey, he knew how to stop so he didn't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know who the winner is. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just on uh, the pure action adrenaline alone. It's just, there's no comparison to that one. You know, it just, the three way, man, the three way dance, you know, like you, she, she you. shoots straight was, was fun. It was, it was good, but it just, yeah. we, we see a lot of movies like that. And there's a lot of girls with guns movies out there that are better. There's a lot of moon Lee, Yukari Oshima films that I think think are better. I've, I've, she shoots straight. I've spoken to Haya about trying to do a whole, library of uh, girl girl with guns and oh, i think list them. thank you so hopefully they'll be able to get those soon nice nice uh nate here is saying it's been a it's been a great stream for samurai guy bobby and kung fu santa but he's got to head out all right nate have a good one thanks for hanging out and just really quick before we end it tonight oh, yeah. uh, this is what next week is next week We got Corey Yuen versus Yuen Wu Peng. What? All you diehard and under siege fans out there? Wait, what's what? Whoa. Red Wolf, oh. baby. Oh. Red Wolf versus Jet Li's high risk. Oh, my goodness. Will be next Thursday. So you don't want to miss that versus. That's oh, right. Wow. And Frank Jane uh, will be with us and maybe some I'll others. Be with you. Maybe. That's my movie. I'll be with I you. I know, Bobby. That's right. Bobby's in Red Wolf. Bobby will be back. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's next week. So tell your friends. That's right. Bring them all. Uh, Rick, anything to say before we wrap it up for today? I, you know, hey, Joyce, want to make another movie? Come on, Joyce. What's the matter? Why won't? Why don't you want to make another movie? <laughs> I, I promise I won't bring blood out of your nose like I did with everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice. Uh, yeah. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching yeah. tonight. Thank you, Bobby. Oh, thank Henry. you. I appreciate thank you, you so much. Really thank great, you. great modern kung fu where nobody gets hurt. Oh, minions. <laughs> All right. Okay. Pray for the of good. and see if you can find my name. That's right. Okay. Rick's in the credits. That's, That's all he right. rolls. Master Don't forget Kung Fu, baby. Master That's right. Uh -huh. Don't forget uh, to go out there and buy Rick's books. That's right. Y'all know what you need to do. Get the, Get the book! Get the book! Get the book!
<laughs> That's right. Films of Fury. And we have a new one here. Rolling Adventure Stories. I do, right. another, I do another Target chapter in the modern day with the fabulous Man Stalker. And yeah, yeah it's, it's on Amazon, baby. All right. There you go. Y'all know what you need to do. But thanks again for, for chiming in. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed yourself tonight. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. And uh, a lot more content coming to the channel, of course. Yes. You know, little good old Fat Samurai guy. Don't forget, tomorrow, me and Lady Fat Blood. that's right, we're going to be doing some trailer reactions and some other movie reviews uh, tomorrow live. We're doing it live. Fuck it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so make sure you guys join us tomorrow at 7 p.m. Pacific. We'll see you on the next one. You guys yes. take care. Keep watching badass, awesome action movies, Peace. especially from Hong Kong, baby. That's, That's right. right. 80s, 90s. That's right. We'll never be matched. I'm biased. I don't care. It's my right. <laughs> All right. Don't forget, look in the description box. Uh, in the, excuse me. I can, I can do this. I can do it. I can, I can do this, right, Rick? <laughs> I keep poking myself in the eye. Description box below of the video so you guys can follow there. Follow Rick and follow Bobby there. That's right. Get the following yes. going. All right. Now we're leaving for real now. I'm rusty, Rick. Okay. I'm rusty with verses. All right, guys, take care. You guys don't go anywhere, but you guys, peace out. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.